Hello and welcome to a short video in which I'll show you some of the features we're working on for the Opt Trebuchet mod. Um, first thing to note is we're still working on a lot of the aesthetics as well as the scripting for this, so it's going to change a lot uh, by the time you get it. Uh, first thing to note is it's all based around key bindings, so I'll just quickly show you the key bindings we have. Again, these could all change. But if you go into the configure add ons, um, and then go, go down to Op Trebuchet and First Contact. You've got a few keys that are quite useful. You've got your HUD on off key, a HUD setting menu key, and a HUD toggle functionality. And I'll show you how those work. If we hit the on off key, does what you might expect, turns the HUD on. The HUD itself has got three different displays. Uh, they can all be independently manipulated in various different ways. So the top is your compass. This has three little icons spinning around, as you might see, you might be able to see. The top one is pointing in the direction of your group leader. So that's always going to face the way I'm facing because I'm the group leader in this situation. So that's your top arrow. The diamond is the um, direction of your current objective. So just like in the Halo games, if you're facing towards the objective, the diamond's in the center of your screen. This can also be set by mission makers. So if your mission maker gives you a simple task destination, which is a scripting command, this diamond will point towards it. If you complete the objective, then the diamond will move to the next objective if the task destination has been set by the mission maker. And the bottom arrow that's pointing upwards is the direction of your group's current waypoint. So again, your mission maker can set that, or if you have a third party tool that allows you to set group waypoints, then you'll be able to see which direction the waypoint is on the HUD. Below the compass, we've got the health bar. Uh, works in the way you might expect. Decreases with damage, increases with healing. The bottom right down here is the display for your weapons. Uh, this is probably the bit that's going to change the most. We've got a couple of plans in regards to the icons. Currently they'll just be plain black silhouettes. But we hope to eventually allow you to change the colour of these. Uh, we're probably also... Well, I'm probably going to also look at how ways of getting a, a an alphabet into game. Uh, so the alf alphabet on the uh, display matches with the with the overall aesthetic. It works like you might expect um, any other Halo to game to work, as well as an armor one. So whichever current weapon you have selected will appear in the top right, and whichever secondary weapon you have is then dropped down to the bottom right. Your rocket launcher always appears on the left, unless you have it selected, in which case it will appear on the top right. The main display is the left hand display. Uh, currently you can see it's set to the motion radar um, that you get in all Halo games. Whichever way I'm facing it rotates to, so... If I face that way, you'll see that the icons are lined up with the way your squad's facing. The toggle functionality keys also come into play here. Uh, the left hand display can be changed, so for example now it's on radar mode. Uh, we do have a few other modes I'll show you in a minute. But the toggle functionality keys will allow you to change the settings quickly while you're in game. So if I toggle next it adds 100 meters to the radar. You can uh, toggle all the way out to 500 meters. If I toggle previous, it zooms in again. And if you go too far, it just cycles round. You've also got the ability to change what's shown on the radar. And if I open up the settings menu, again, this is pretty crappy looking. It's going to change. We haven't done any art for this at all yet. But you can change what it shows. So currently it's set to side and known enemy. 
which means that the radar is going to show you the side, uh, everyone on your side, plus enemy known by your side, uh, which is an important difference between showing all enemy. They have to have been seen by your teammates. We have ways of limiting this as well. Uh, I'll show you that at the end of the video. On the left hand side, eventually, hopefully, you'll be able to change the colour scheme. We've also got an option to turn the compass on and off. And we've also got an option to change what's shown on your left hand display. So if I turn the left hand display to off and the compass to off and go back into the normal view, you'll see there's no compass and no left hand display anymore. We can also change the left hand display to, for example, shoulder camera mode. Again, this is looking a bit ugly. Uh, it's going to be fixed, made to look a bit better. But we've got a shoulder cam function. And with the toggle keys, you can toggle between your different squad mates. And if I start running forward, you'll see how it works. So you can toggle to the next person, or you can toggle back to the previous one. So I'll just quickly show you two modules I'm also developing. The first one's the HUD control module. So as a mission maker, you can limit certain features of the HUD. Uh, for example, you could say players can only see people in their own group on the uh, HUD radar. The second module, I've just gone ahead and synced a load of uh, units to this. And that's the HGV start module. Again, this is extremely experimental and it'll look completely different by the time you get it. But it's got a few cinematic options. Uh, it also allows you to start uh, different heights. For example, here we've, we've put the start height at 5,000, uh, atmospheric entry starts at 3,500, and re-entry effects end at 3,000. Uh, we've also got shoot deploy height, and we've got allow players to control the HEVs. So we'll, we'll hit that option there and allow players to control the HEVs. So uh, we'll switch the HUD on, because we control the HEV via the HUD when the engines kick in. And the engines will kick in when we enter the atmosphere, in quotation marks. Um, one thing I didn't show you about the HUD was when you're in third person as well, the left-hand display stays with you. So that's quite a useful little feature if you play in third person. When we reach 3,500, the engines will kick in. There we go. And now that we've probably dropped below 3,500, the flame effects have gone away. Um, I'm going to take manual control now, the engines have kicked in. And with your Q and E key, you can spin the craft around. So I'm just going to spin around so I can see all the other pods. And with my WASD keys, I can also take control. And if you look on the map, you can see that I'm starting to leave the pack. And I'll try and pick a safe spot in the middle of this compound here. It's a little bit hard to stop the HEV from moving once you've got it moving. I'm fighting against the it wanting to drift further north. Okay, I think I've settled that down a bit. Once your shoot's deployed, you lose control of the uh, of the HEV, and then it just goes into free fall mode. And there we go. We've hit the ground, and I can jump out. This will also give me an opportunity to demonstrate the um, the radar mode, show you how the enemy appear. 
So I've just waited for the rest of my squad to catch up, and then we'll progress into town. I don't really have much else to say. Um, I'm not going to leave you with a few minutes of gameplay after the HEV drop. Um, one thing to note really I is Soldier, we're looking at adding third party ahead. support to this as an ambition anyway. Meters, so front. if you have your own, Man, if you have your own front. helmets, then hopefully you'll be able to add a config entry to that, which will then allow you to use our HUD system, because we've noticed a few people creating their own helmets. We can see up ahead on the radar that it, the information is starting to update, and we've got one of our own squads off to the left as they push forward. The things they learn about the enemy are going to be updated to the map. It's not the most useful thing for pinpointing where the enemy are, which is good. But it does give you a general indication of where they're coming from. Again, if you don't want it, you can just switch it off and just keep it to squad only or side only. Ouch. So I've just been hit there, and as you can see, the health bars dropped right down to the bottom. Um, if I manage to heal myself, hopefully the health bar will indicate that I've been healed. So there you go, it's popped back up. Gives you a general indication that your health's improved. Biofoam's been injected and whatnot. So, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Um, let us know what you think. As I said, a lot of this is going to change. So I'll leave you with the rest of the gameplay. Man, seventy five meters, front. Soldier, seventy five meters, front. Smoke out!